Rafi Bujikanyan has been on this story for weeks. Rafi, tell us about tonight's vote and how it played out. Andrew, a lot of bitter debate, often along the party battle lines you'd expect, though a couple of Liberal MPs did say they only went along reluctantly, despite the Prime Minister's insistence it was the only way. For the first time in weeks, the Prime Minister was able to take a walk just outside the House of Commons before again defending his decision to invoke the Emergencies Act. Law enforcement agencies relied on it to set up secured areas in downtown Ottawa and at border crossings. It prevented foreign money from continuing to fund illegal blockades. And it's making sure our borders remain open. A very different take from the official opposition. It is using the most draconian piece of legislation at its disposal to fix a parking problem in downtown Ottawa. When the protests started, some Conservative MPs voiced support. Though the Conservative Party did call for the protests to end, but has not been on board with the Emergencies Act. Can the Prime Minister tell us what is the criteria for this emergency to be declared over, and on what date will he end these unprecedented and invasive measures? Some of those invasive measures can be directed at individual bank accounts. Two Conservative MPs say they have constituents who had their financial assets frozen after making small donations. CBC News has reached out to those MPs but has not been able to verify their claims. The RCMP says the only people targeted in this way are owners and drivers of vehicles who did not want to leave the area and not a list of donors. It's important for all of us to be very, very careful to get our facts exactly right in each circumstance. And while most opposition parties voted against extending the act, the NDP supported the government, it says reluctantly. That we are in a, in a very difficult time for our nation. We believe very strongly that this has been a national crisis. So Rafi, the Emergencies Act, it is staying for now, but there could be more drama ahead. Andrew, Conservatives immediately presented a motion to revoke the act with 20 MPs as signatories, but the House quickly rose and won't be back again until next Monday, so it wouldn't be surprising to see the Tories bring it up again at that point. Andrew? Okay, Rafi, thank you very much. You're welcome. We're going to get some analysis now from David Cochran. Uh, David, the extension of the Emergencies Act. It could last for 30 days, but the standing promise has been to, to end it sooner, right? If the situation permits. What should we make of that? And, and when might that happen? Well, Andrew, it's really more now about conditions than it is about the calendar. Downtown Ottawa is clear, but there are still pockets of protesters in the city. And while the trucks are largely gone, they've regrouped in multiple locations in sort of the rural outskirts of Ottawa, and there's no guarantee they won't come back. So both the Liberals and the NDP cite that as a major concern. They want more certainty that the now open border crossings will stay secure, and they want to give the financial measures that they've invoked under this order more time to help deal with the dark money and the foreign money that's really funded a lot of this. Once those conditions are met, that's when the Liberals say they will willingly revoke this order. Of course, it could happen sooner if the NDP decides it will no longer support it and decide to vote against it in the House of Commons. Right. And, and while there's a, you know, a peace and order component to all of this, there's also the political component. So what, what are the ramifications there for the Prime Minister, do you think? Yeah, well, Justin Trudeau's already cleared two big hurdles. I mean, first, he won the vote tonight. That's kind of important. And two, he's invoked the Emergencies Act and, and the Emergencies Orders, and the blockades have ended. So whether it's justified or not, it, it appears to have worked. The risk now is how long are they sustained, and can their political opponents, especially the Conservatives, prosecute the argument that this is essentially a vast dictatorial overreach? So the battle for Wellington Street is largely over, Andrew. The battle for the hearts and minds of voters, that's going to continue. David Cochran, thank you very much. You got it.